video game music can have a lasting impact on anyone who listens to it. Like, da 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 da. Okay, that's yeah, that's enough. I only, only really need, only really needed one note. So it's no surprise that those who play games will be able to reel off examples of game music that really hit home for them, worming its way into their hearts and onto regular playlist rotation. And the same goes for the Outside Extra and Outside Xbox teams. Here then are the bits of game music that blew our minds. Dun dun dun. Oh, I really need to get this under control. Surprise, surprise, I'm here with an Assassin's Creed piece of what? music. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Assassin's Creed. And there's basically one piece of music that if you play it to a fan, everyone just goes, <laughs> and that is Ezio's family. It is a good life we lead, brother. <sighs> the best, may it never change. And may it never change us. Ezio's family, it's very simple. It's a lovely, simple piece of music, and there's a particular kind of riff from it that is used throughout the entire series since. It came in Assassin's Creed 2. Ezio's family is basically a very sad piece because he loses his entire family. Spoiler warning for the beginning, very beginning of Assassin's Creed 2, <laughs> if you've not caught up yet. You and your collaborators are hereby sentenced to death. You are a traitor, Roberto, and one of them. You may take our lives this day, but we will have yours in return, I swear. We will! Father! Hey, grab the boy. He's one of them. It's a very haunting song, and it's, so I just, I really love anything that's kind of like vocal and a oper little bit operatic and stuff. Can, can we, can we get that, that opening bit play, just played for it? It's got that little bit of electronic stuff from the future as mm -hmm. well. From the Animus, because you're in the Animus. It sounds like themes to the original tune. That's probably why I also like it as well. <laughs> it just builds up, builds up and builds up. You often hear it in kind of very solemn moments in the game. If I hear it sometimes, I'm kind of a bit like... Because <sighs> of like, the sad things that happen, it's such a moving story. Just like I, and, and the fact that I spent three games with Ezio, like people who've played that series, we spent a lot of time with this lovely Italian man who lost everything but then built up another family in the Assassins. The family he chose. The family he chose, yeah. <laughs> just, uh... The actual Ezio family theme is used again and again and again. And one particularly lovely version of it is from Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which I believe Luke has queued up for me. It was an interesting thing because like Syndicate was fairly different from the original games and the, the series had grown, but like the music always harked back to that key game of Assassin's Creed 2 that really like kind of set the standard for the series and linked them all together as like the Creed, the Assassin's Brotherhood. The London one was particularly lovely because it had a lot of strings to get that Victorian era kind of sound to it and I'm a sucker for strings. And it's played such a huge role in the series that it's even been used in Assassin's Creed Origins, one of the later ones. So there was this amazing kind of Egyptian sounding music, but with Ezio's theme. And I remember when they first played the, like, the trailer at E3 and everyone's like, it's Ezio's theme in the chat because I was watching it online and everyone's like, oh my god, oh my god. Everyone just loves it so much and so do I and it's nice and it makes me feel emotional and reminds me of just very happy times when I just locked myself away in my room for ages and collected lots of feathers. <laughs> <laughs> Good times, happy times. Time. That's the happy real sadness time. of Assassin's Creed 2 is having to collect all those sodding feathers. No, it was the best. <laughs> First off, I just want to say that the premise of this video is unfair because I love all video game music. I've got about 90 tracks I want to include. <laughs> so many I want to include. Uh, Streets of Rage 2 soundtrack. Final just all Fight. the Final Fight. Oh my god, Final music. Fight is so great. Mortal Kombat 3, The Subway. But in the end, I have to must choose, choose one must single choose. one. And everyone knows you hate all the others. Okay, well. <laughs>
That's fair. <laughs> I've chosen the theme to Speedball 2 Brutal Deluxe. Which was a sports game. Games for the Amiga, they didn't really do story back then. Um, they would have a premise for the game, which is like, robot uh, works in a restaurant. <laughs> for example, and the entire story would be picture of the robot in a restaurant and the text would appear on screen and it would say the year is 2100. Robots work in restaurants. <laughs> Do that now. Speedball 2 is about a violent sport called speedball. In the first game uh, you played speedball but then it was forced underground because it was too violent. But now it's come back up from the underground. And that's the story of Speedball 2 and this is all explained to you on a scrolling text. Thing. And this music uh, plays underneath, and if uh, we could just hear a little snippet. It's just big, like, brassy stabs and, like, electronic little runs that you wouldn't be able to do on an actual instrument. They're the sort of thing where you get, like, a sequencer and you just drag the mouse like that. And you go, and then you go, right. It's in the game. And it just, it really reminds me of those Amiga games, which were some of the first games I ever played when I was like a tiny child. I hadn't even got into like sci-fi or anything properly then, so this was like my first exposure to a bunch of different sci-fi tropes, and everything just seemed uh, to have just limitless possibilities, and everything seemed so alien and cool to me as a, as a tiny child, and this music was the sort of soundtrack to that. And I think Speedball 2's theme really exemplifies a lot of the music from games of that period, and also it sort of uh, tied in with uh, popular music at the time, like The Prodigy, their sort of early stuff um, was very much along the same lines, and yeah, it's just really evocative of a time and place. Uh, when gaming seemed like really exciting, like it could do anything at all. And speedball was a sports game in which you could punch the other players unconscious uh, if they got in your way. And I was like, whoa, that's not in other sports. This is good, games are good. <laughs> Have you ever considered that games might be good? Go from the start with the big weird bit at the start. It's a bright brass. That's the best that the Amiga ad lib sound card or whatever it was could do. <laughs> There's a bit later on where it's like it turns into popcorn. No, it doesn't. That was it. That was the. <laughs> it's good, Mike. It's just taking it somewhere else. I think I just like music that has stabs in it, like yeah. big brass stabs. Like hits and yeah. Brass stabs. Bring up uh, Mortal Kombat 3 Subway. Yeah, I think I just like industrial music with stabs. <laughs> I think this is I'm um, coming to a realization. I just really like music. That's it, really. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks, thanks for watching. The music I want to talk about now is the Hyrule Field theme from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Now, Twilight Princess is not my favourite Zelda game, but the Hyrule field theme is probably the best thing in the game. It plays whenever you are riding around Hyrule Field, which is the big open world in the game, which originally came out for the uh, GameCube, but did get an, an HD re-release. Quite soon into the game you'll hear this, and you will hear it a lot, because you'll spend a lot of time riding around the field, so it has to be good. And it is! And I'll tell you for why. It begins in a straightforward enough manner. You get music that evokes the feeling of riding around a field. There's a sort of happy tune. Uh, it's got this nice sort of like horse clip cloppy rhythm. It's like... It's not that one though, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really uh, pleasant um, it's bit of music. It's textbook. Uh, it's it's workmanlike. And, uh, you know, it sort of lulls you into a sense of, oh, I'm happily going to the Hyrule Field. And then, out of nowhere, it just busts into this unbelievable 15 or so seconds of music that is utterly mind-blowing. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I'll play it to everyone in the room. Okay, here we go. Oh, I bloody love it. I 
didn't, what? You didn't know, the downwards run as well. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, oh, it's, it, it's making bits of my head and heart go all electric. It's just listening to it. It's, it's so beautiful. I love it so much. For me, it evokes everything about the whole Zelda series. You know, it's got that, it's got that sort of driving rhythm. It's got that very direct, very strong melody with a sweet harmony to it as well and it just brings to mind Link and he's there and he's on his horse and he's focused and he's got his sword and just it's for me it's what my favorite game series is all about just that 15 seconds of music so yeah I will listen to it over and over and over again. Quite often the Zelda music gets orchestrated like for big live shows or anything and if you're ever listening to that track down the um, Twilight Princess uh, Hyrule Field mix or the theme because man like People doing the orchestrations, they, they know when they've got a good thing going and some of them just do like really crazy things with that focused 15 seconds of pure musical brilliance. It was quite nice when I was doing the research for this and just like finding the music and like listening to listening to it. Whenever I went down to the comments for all of these videos, everyone was time code linking to that bit of music. Like everyone, this is what you're here for. Like who else is here for this bit of music? Which is really, really nice because uh, you know I've, I've always, always loved it and always treasured th those few seconds. Um, so it was really nice to know that everyone else just gets it, man. What if the song was all that 15 seconds and just like 15 seconds of the boring bit? Uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work as well. I think it, I think its brevity is is part of the reason why it's leave why it's so more. sweet. Yeah, it leaves them, it does sort of leave you wanting more. Like there's room for that melody to go to somewhere else, I'm sure. And and again, like if you listen to some of the like orchestral live versions of that track, it does. But yeah, for me I like the original just 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 a burst bolt from the blue, hits you right in the heart and then it's gone. Love it. Guess what type of game my favorite songs from? Stealth. Real time yeah. strategy. It's a driving game! Yay. Yes, uh, my favourite tune is Splash Wave from OutRun. Now there's some debate about which is the best OutRun track to play for the original OutRun. Uh, on the one hand you have Splash Wave, on the other hand you have all idiots who think it's Magical Sound Shower, and they're all completely wrong. Flash Wave is the greatest one. Um, it's quite funny, because nowadays you listen to it and it's like, wow, this sounds so 80s. But it's because OutRun came out in the 80s. It's a super 80s, like authentic video game bit of chip tune. The entire process of playing OutRun and listening to music is awesome, because what happens is at the start, you tune the little, you get a little radio thing, and you get to tune the dial to which of the songs you want. So you get a bit of choice, even in the arcade game about which tune you want. Obviously you choose Splash Wave because you're a correct, excellent human being. And the great thing about Splash Wave is it's got exactly the right amount of build up to it. Ready? You're kind of accelerating through one of, I think what was at the time, one of the fastest racing games out there. So the sensation of speed in the original OutRun is great. But obviously you have that kind of slow build up and the song mirrors that, that sort of slow build up. So it starts with this sort of like really understated kind of building and then the song kicks in as you hit the sort of straight where you fly past the beach and stuff and it's just perfectly timed. <laughs> Magical Sound Shower, on the other hand, bad song, has Bad like, song. it's a bad song. It has <laughs> two separate, the intro goes on too long and it has almost like two separate intros. By the time you've got to the bit where the, the song actually kicks in, you're pretty much out of the first stage. You're already past the beach. You've already crashed into a truck, flipped your Ferrari, probably had a terrible insurance payout. It's the wrong song, whereas Splash Wave is absolutely fantastic. And for me, it really evokes that kind of top-down convertible Pacific Coast Highway, like, driving through Malibu, all that kind of stuff, which I've been fortunate enough to do myself, not in a Ferrari, unfortunately, I'm not that loaded. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really kind of summary and evocative of that kind of 1980s California beach sort of vibe. So they remade Splash Wave 4 OutRun 2 as well. And again, the, it's almost like they've designed the track so that the point where you're gonna first throw the car into its glorious sort of power slide, which is what OutRun 2 was all about, that's when the song kind of kicks in. There you go. Yeah, little drum fill. And then it's the guitars. 
and the... Well, they weren't guitars originally, they were things that sounded a little bit like guitar, but actually chip -chi. But yeah, there you go. Now play Magical Sound Shower, because I want to sell this once and for all. Oh, that's good. Andy, don't. Still going? Oh, it's Spandau Ballet. Yeah, it's Tom Cruise's cocktail. Right, okay. But Tom Cruise is still mixing your cocktail. Yeah. And the, you, the key's getting locked. Yeah, the well. key's getting locked. Listen, it's not even... Yes. No. Second that's intro. No, that's no tail. Second right. intro. Yeah. Now you're in the song. Magical Sound Shower is the wrong Outrun song. <laughs> Proven. Oh, why'd you stop it? Because, <laughs> because you've already completed the game, Andy. Now, it seems that the theme in this video is it's like mainly kind of epic music that we feel very nostalgic about. And uh, one particular game series that I'm very nostalgic about is the Fable series, uh, which I jumped in on Fable 2. Now, the main theme is written by one of my favourite composers of all time, Danny Elfman. Battle fiendish evil and journey into its very heart. <laughs> Live by your wits, or rule by sheer strength. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> but the, the piece of music that evokes the most nostalgia in me is actually uh, a piece that comes from the original game as well, uh, and it's the Temple of Light theme, and also used in the main menu. Now, there are two versions. There's one that's kind of... Uh, played more directly on a harp and then there's one that's got more of a kind of echoey ghosty haunted sound and that's the one that they used in the menu theme on Fable 2 it was like show this lovely Albion scene and then you press A and Zoe Wanamaker goes and so our story begins and, I'm like, mm -hmm. and so uh, it's it's a game that I've played a lot. I've got a lot of characters saved in it because I wanted to see what happens when you're good, when you're evil, when you're neutral, and I just love that game world. Like Fable 2, mwah, mwah, I'm still upset about Lionhead. That particular music was that very calm, gentle, relaxing piece that you kind of knew that you were okay. It was often used as well when you went through a demon door. So you go into like these amazing places that were like absolutely beautiful and you know you had your family homestead in the one near Oakfield and stuff like that. <laughs> this real sense of like harming, I can only imagine what it must have felt like for people who'd played the first game first and then came back because that's a real like oh I'm back in the fable world. But yeah it just evokes very nice comforting memories again of me just like sitting in my own little world running around Albion as this hero that I'd created with my little dog. My lovely little dog called Dave. I like how it's slightly wibbly wobbly. Yeah, it's that slight distortion. It's like you're not really in reality and that that's what I really liked about the Fable games is that unlike nearly every single other RPG that I had played around then and have played since, which are like kind of very heavily based upon Tolkien-esque type fantasy worlds, which I love, I love, but Fable 2 had that kind of fairy tale fantasy to it, which I think isn't found that much in gaming. It was just like this very kind of more mystical and more like, like a fable. So it, that, you know, and it's the, it ran through that entire game like beautifully. It's just really lovely storybook feel that made it, you know, the Fable series and my favourite in that series. Fable 2 has a lot of good memories for me of like kind of distracting me when I was unemployed and <laughs> making me feel like I was doing something. So yay! <laughs> Halo as a series has the most John Williams tier theme in video gaming. Don't at me. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're John Williams. Unless you're John Williams, in which case, love your work. <laughs> <laughs> but in the realm of video games, I, I contend that Halo has the most 
god tier, John Williams style, epic, unselfconsciously bombastic, hummable, like repeatable theme. That said, Halo 2, of the very, very many Halo theme iterations, and there are so very many, Halo 2 has uh, one called the Mjolnir Mix, and it is an absolute banger. <laughs> It is great for getting yourself psyched up for meetings, um, important appointments, life events. You know, I listen to it this morning. I listen to it when I'm at the gym, when I'm running and I want to feel like I'm a master chief. It starts, as you might imagine, your iconic, classic, memorable Halo theme. And then it's like there's a, an electric guitarist on the horizon, very distant, and he's running at you. <laughs> sprinting at you, shredding his guitar. He's getting closer and closer as the song progresses, and then there's drums out the wazoo, drums for days. And at the same time, it's the Halo theme, and it's really loud if you're playing it right. Imagine it's Halo 2, you're in the Metropolis level, early in the game, whatever, and there's a big old scarab and you've got a rocket launcher. Martin O'Donnell, legendary Bungie composer uh, of Halo stuff. And we didn't get to the bit with the choral lady wailing, but it really adds something. It's like, remember Lisa Gerard in the Gladiator soundtrack? It's that kind of wordless, choral, waily. Pretty heavy. This song is pretty heavy. The whaley, shreddy, electric, epic, orchestral, choral. It's just, it's just everything. It's so extra. It's so sort of unselfconsciously cheesily epic, and that, that's that's good times. It, it, and it plays, I think, also at the in the end credits of Halo 2, and that's that's a really good place to stick your excellent game music. I think when everyone's sitting back and thinking about what they've just done. <laughs> Hello, it's me, I'm back again. Woo! Yeah! How do you get to? I just do, because <laughs> administrative privileges. <laughs> and because I couldn't let this video slide out of view without somebody mentioning the sweet music of the video game Undertale. Undertale is a remarkable uh, feat of programming for many reasons, but one of the main ones is that the creator of the game, uh, Toby Fox, also uh, composed this unbelievable uh, array of, of music. It's also brilliantly done and I think this comes together best of all in the track Undertale from Undertale. I guess it's self-titled or something? <laughs> It's probably one of the most chill. I know that, uh, like, uh, when I mentioned Undertale, a lot of people who played the game will have been expecting me to say Megalovania. Great song. Unbelievably good. <laughs> we could go on. <laughs> That's incredibly good, but actually I think on balance, although that music always gets me pumped, I think the, I think the track Undertale is the one that really gets me. In the game, uh, it plays at the point where you are in the king's house. At the point where you reach this house, um, you start getting like characters popping up and, and explaining backstory to you. It's interesting because it's the, it's the enemies that you've been fighting or, you know, passively helping so far in the game, but now they're just popping up with no fight option, just with like dialogue that's explaining the backstory of how things came to be this bad. It really, really builds amazingly. Uh, it starts with this very, very, just like, like just a little simple melody that goes like, duh, duh, duh. I, I almost feel like it could be music from Life is Strange, which is another series I love. Like it's got that sort of, like slightly folksy, slightly indie thing. It does sound to me a little bit apart from the rest of the soundtrack. You just heard a little bit of how it sounds at the beginning and by the end it's more or less the same but it's just built and built and built so much. I really 
really, really think it's lovely. Uh, it, it does this. It does this little thing where that little musical tune where it goes da 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 da. And it keeps going back to that last note. Duh. When you're listening to it, you want it to do something else. Like in your in your brain, you want to hear it go to like a different note, and it denies you that satisfaction for for minutes and minutes and minutes through the songs. So I think what you want it to do is go like da da da. Yeah, that's right. But it um but like it, it won't. It goes, lower than you it goes lower than you expect. That's right. Every, every single time, and so it's got this like slight sort of weird frustration as you're listening to it. So your brain also completes it. it yes. Yes, that's right, like it doesn't quite finish right. But yeah, it does finally give you what you've been waiting for at this point. Hang on, wait for it. Oh. Whew. That's the stuff, man. <laughs> and, um, you know, like it's, it's, it's what the best video game music does, which is to achieve a real, uh, like, emotional punch with, with a very, very limited amount of, of sound, and, and that's what great video game music has been doing for decades. You know, it sort of reminds me of an anime that I know you like as well. Mm -hmm. I didn't make that connection, but yeah, it's got that, yeah. And that similar sort of sense of like a story like resolved, like you sort of get yeah, that. Like, Gosh, it also has this really um, sweet bridge where everything just stops for a second and it goes like this. Now, just having heard that, now listen to the first bit of music you hear in Ocarina of Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, Exactly. There are a few points in Undertale where it goes what I would consider full Zelda. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's a masterful bit of music, I think, in, in a, a soundtrack that is full of wonderful, hummable, catchy tunes. So yeah, Undertale from Undertale. So there were some of the pieces of video game music that we really, really love and it was honestly extremely difficult for us all to choose them because there's so much good video game music. Um, so I kind of just went with the ones that make me cry a bit. So, <laughs> but what ones bring back, you know, lovely memories for you or just uh, absolute bangers that you really want to listen to all the time? Uh, let us know in the comments down below and uh, we will see you uh, next time. But before then, you should click on one of these videos here are the uh, video game films that we really like and over on outside Xbox there are the video game moments that made us go nah no don't want it and also if you really 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 like this video subscribe and click the bell the bell that's important ling ling ling